Good Monday morning. It is the last week of March and the first week that we are going to have a real Major League Baseball. That's how the week will end. Opening day for the Yankees home in 48 degrees in the Bronx on Thursday afternoon. So Friday morning we'll be talking about the Yankees and Mets starting their seasons. We've got a Final Four that's set. That's bizarre. And we got a lot of expectations around here, man. I can't even tell you the last time we had this many expectations with our local teams. Knicks got to get in and win around. The Rangers got to go deep into the playoffs. The Islanders and Devils have to have great showings. The Nets need to at least show up in the playoffs. And the Yankees and Mets, well, they got to get into the ALCS and the NLCS, if not farther than that. We got real expectations around here as we head into April. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? Yes, we do, G. Good morning. I'm doing great. And uh, I will say this, that yesterday's video that went viral about... uh, Aaron Boone telling Anthony Volpe that he is coming north with the team was great, man. It was just, it was perfect. It was uh, very stereotypical about how you would tell a rookie that has just had a phenomenal spring. And I think there's part, there's two things going on here. Number one, the young man earned it. Yeah. There's no question about that. He earned it. But number two, don't think that the Yankees don't hear the fan base screaming that they don't want to, he- they don't want to see Isaiah kind of Falefa. They don't want, I, I, they want this guy here. And they want him playing. And, you know, it gives them a little bit, you know, this, like, youth movement. You know, this is, like, one of these hopefully long-term core players like Aaron Judge has turned out to be. You know, a couple other guys never lived up to that. But uh, I I can't remember the last time. And maybe Aaron Judge was the last time. Maybe Gary Sanchez when he came up that that first year towards the end of the year. And he was the only reason to watch the Yankees because of the home runs. But I I don't remember maybe mid-'90s when those other guys all came up. That uh, that uh, yeah, a fan base has been this excited about the potential of a rookie, and he plays the most important position on the field. So I, I would just say that uh, it was a great thing watching that yesterday, and and Aaron Boone did a hell of a job with it. Sure, and it was just great. You know, that's that's the good news in sports. That's that was really a good moment, and I'm glad that that young man, you know, got the job and 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 won it outright and basically blew everybody away. And this is one of the things that the Yankees echoed with the fan base because they haven't done that a lot. It did get rid of Aaron Hicks, get rid of Josh Donaldson before they got rid of Gary Sanchez, get rid of him now, uh, fire Brian Cashman, fire yeah. Aaron. They they usually don't listen to the fan base, but with this one, I think that Anthony, it wasn't really listening to the fan base. It was watching Anthony Volpe play. There was no way you could come north without him being the starting shortstop just from a pure baseball standpoint. New Jersey kid did everything he needed to do, and the Yankees need energy. They just, I know Aaron Judge is back, and if they would have lost him, would have been devastating, and he's the captain now, but they, the Yankees need a spark. They need energy. They need something well, about especially them. Especially with all these injuries in the pitching yes, staff. Yes, right, exactly, which is we have another one now with Severino starting the year on the IL, and the thoughts of him you know, being healthy and having a full season and giving you like a bunch of starts without being gone for months is now evaporated, at least in the early going. Um, but yeah, I mean, they've, they've got a ton of injuries with the rotation, but this team just it is felt stale uh, the last couple of years. After the great start last year, things sort of went south. We know how it ended with the Astros getting swept, but I mean, this is this right here, this Volpe situation provides that spark that they've been missing for a long well, time. Well, they're going to have to figure out their pitching situation because, yeah. you know, I think they got like seven guys on the injured list. Yep. Uh, I don't know how many of those, you know, maybe four of those guys were going to get, you know, extended time either as a starter or out of the bullpen, but uh, they're going to have to figure that out. I mean, I, I who knows? And then, you know, for the Mets, I, I was kind of disappointed that uh, Vientos and Beatty didn't make it. I really was because you're bringing back guys and, you know, everybody knows it. So I'm not saying anything that anybody doesn't know. You're bringing back three guys that, that were just awful at the end of last year. Maybe Escobar wasn't. But, you know, with Ruff and Vogelback, they were just brutal. And I'm, if they start out, so I, I here are the guys, Glaber Torres, Aaron Hicks, Josh Donaldson for the Yankees, and then I'll, I'll put for the Mets, it's going to be Vogelback, it's going to be Ruff, and I, I think Scherzer is probably the guys that are in the crosshairs of the Met fan. Like another, and Escobar to a certain point because he's blocking Beatty, and Beatty had a pretty damn good spring. Yeah. And it looked like he was getting better. And I understand, well, you know, the time clock, and we, we got to give these guys a little bit more time to 
you know, to learn the game and become complete baseball players, it's all complete nonsense. If you bring these guys up here, especially Vogelback and Ruff, because Escobar is going to play third base, and these guys are get off the horrendous starts, they are going to be like, you know, just attacked by the fans. Oh, it's, it's going to be insufferable for them. They're going to crack under any sort of pressure that is on them. I know Vogel back in his first couple of weeks here was, you know, a Met fan favorite. He was getting on base, but then that completely fell apart. Ruff is, was terrible from the get go. He had a terrible spring. Vogel back had a terrible spring. And this is the thing about this team that. You know, they, it's more money spent on this team than anybody in baseball. That's right. But still, you've got a black hole at DH. And and that, to me, is and a problem. Clo- and closer. Well, yes, but the closer thing was an injury. This was a team-building thing. And you had an opportunity to, to upgrade at DH, and you brought back these two stiffs that last year were awful for you. So, yeah, I mean, there's going to be a very short leash on those guys. And fans do want the unknown. They do want the young player. They want the homegrown player and the young guy to come up because you don't know exactly what you're going to get. We saw Beatty for a little bit before his injury, but those are the guys that that we want to see. So you're right. I mean, it, you get a uh, one for 11 with Daniel Vogel back to start the season, and people don't think it's cute anymore that he's a little pudgy guy running around the bases. No, they want, they want production. They want production from both of those guys. And, uh, you know, Dar- Darren Ruff is a guy that, you know, he has history on his side, but not recent history and not here. I mean, so those guys are going to be under the fan microscope. But I'm sure they'll be under Billy Epler's microscope and Steve Cohen's microscope. And they'll be out there. I don't know who's out there or whether or not they'll bring up Vientos and or uh, Beatty. At some point, they'll be up here. Yeah. Uh, just due to injury or numbers or ineffectiveness, whatever it is, they'll be here. So getting here... Like Volpe's gotten here, that's great. That's a great story. You know, he's a local kid. Yeah, New Jersey, yeah. Right, and th- that's a great story, and he deserves it. So I think everybody's happy about that. The uh, On the other side, for the National League team in this town, you know, fans are like, what are we doing? And these guys better get off to good starts, man, I'm telling you, or they're going to be booed mercifully. Because yeah. this is a 365, I think it's 363, $365 million team. And you're counting on... Two DHs that, you know, Ruff plays a little bit in the outfield, but you're counting on these guys to carry, you know, their, the load yeah. that they're going to be asked to carry, and, and or you're going to just ask everybody else to do that much more. Well, remember Steve Cohen prior to the whole Carlos Correa deal and it falling apart said that there was a missing piece. Then when they thought that they agreed to terms with Correa before the physical, he said this was the missing piece. Well, the owner believed it. I think we both believe it, that there was something missing in the lineup, especially with the way that we saw the offense play at the end of the year. They don't have that. It was easier to deal with Vogel back and rough when you thought you had someone else in that lineup like Carlos Correa. Right. Now that he's gone, your closer's gone, and you still have those two guys in there, those are the things that you're going to focus on. And you just have to hope, too, that... You know, and then also you know, you're losing Quintana, who was a guy that you had counted on at the back end of the rotation. So you, there's some pressure going to be on David Peterson. So you know, really, you know, this starting pitching has got to be great, and it's got to be great for the entire year. And the offense has to be consistent, which is something we have not seen in many years. Well, you got a forty million dollar pitcher saying that he's not liking yeah. how he's feeling coming out I of uh, a tri- spring training, yeah, and that's uh, Justin Verlander. Great, it's oh, awesome. Boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. Here we go. Well, listen, this is going to be a long season, just like the basketball season is, just like the hockey season is. And uh, the Knicks have kind of backed themselves a little bit into a corner here the last three weeks, or three games, I should say. And Julius Randle's, you know, gone off the, uh, you know, off the, the mental reservation there. As, he hasn't uh, even addressed again. this, really. I mean, it's, it's he hasn't even talked about it in and the media. Is, what I, you know, and I know this got a lot of play over the weekend. I said the Knicks are never going to win with him. Mm-hmm. They're never going to win with him. I don't care about double doubles. I don't care about anything else. They're just never going to. And when win you with say him. win, you mean win a championship? I mean, win a championship. Or... I mean, like, where are they going? What are they doing? I mean, he's not leading them anywhere. Let's say you brought in another superstar. He's not. It's not going to work with him. You know, and and it's not going to work with him because he. And I thought he had it under control around the All-Star game when he was going through all that self-reflection yeah. and his attitude and how things were going and, great and, and and how it affected everybody else. And I was saying, okay, that's part of the thing. Let's 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 self-reflect. Let's know who we are and and let's work on it and let's get better and let's make sure that our teammates 
are, you know, playing off of me and like me as a teammate. Now, all these guys can come out and say whatever they want about liking the teammate, but all of this other heavy mental lifting with him snapping on the court, you know, the the coach after the game having to make some lame ass excuse about his actions on the court and all it's in, you know it's intensive. No, no, it's not. He, he's lost his mind, and it's it's too wishy washy. It's too inconsistent, and it just it's it takes too much time, and and puts too many people in a bad spot to deal with that crap. Yeah, I think that his entire future. And this is pretty obvious, but his entire future with the Knicks is going to be tied on how he handles himself this in the postseason. With the Knicks should be done. I know what you. I, I mean, know like you, what you're it, saying. This is last year, but, this is it. This is it. I but do you know how I say the the the? Uh, I think Zach Wilson should be done with the Jets, and you tell me, well, this is what the Knicks want. I I the Knicks it's have given him. So I know, but I'm what I'm trying to provide is what I think the organization is thinking because of the history of how they've handled him, and if he ends up playing well in the postseason, and they win around, he's sticking around. They love him. They've defended him every they step have no of the choice way. But to defend him, it's ridiculous. No, Actually, not really. I mean, they. And, and quite frankly, it is. It's Jalen Brunson that changed, and Josh Hart too. The two of those guys changed the team when they're healthy and on the court. But you know, watching him again implode, and then all of a sudden for three days disappears. Yeah. I mean, like it's it's too much. Yeah. I mean, he's got to go somewhere else. He's got to like this is it. He's he's. He may have a, a, a good playoff run, and I'm, I'm rooting for them. I really am. But if I'm sitting there as an executive and I'm running the team and I'm watching this guy on the court doing what he does and snapping mentally. Well, if he has one of those on the court in the playoffs, then that really should be his ticket out of here. That that should what be the end of it. What happened to the self-reflection around uh, uh, the All-Star game? I mean, I think that when – especially because Jalen Brunson didn't play in that game where he lost it. I think that he has this thing – that he has to take over, and he is the guy, and then he gets frustrated with the officiating, and he doesn't have the tools to calm himself down. I mean, that's really what it comes down to, as simple as that. I don't know why everybody feels like they need to defend his actions Well, the on players the do. I mean, well, the players have they, and his teammates stick, have. They're going to stick by him, yeah. you know. T- t- tacitly, I think. I see. I don't think that the fan base has really defended his actions. I mean, it, it's inexcusable to to look like you're going to fight one of your teammates on the court. It's inexcusable to get in the face of officials feel, seemingly over every and other over game. Over and over again. And, you know, it, listen, Mike Breen has been doing Nick games for a long time. And they know what line they can cross, What you know, what what's the difference between propaganda and actually doing a game. You know, and, and Mike tries, I think, to straddle the line. And even he said the other night, you go, you got to stop yelling at the referees. Now, how long are we going to keep saying that? Yeah. I mean, it's going on for three years now. Sure. I mean, they've, they've, and I'm sick of that. Like, oh, he gives you a double-double. I don't really give a damn. Yeah. I mean, he's not making your team – he's not making his teammates better. You know, I, I often talk about the commitment to be great and the commitment to be great. The guy that's the leader of the team has to elevate everybody else on the team. And he doesn't do that. He drags everybody else down. Now, Jalen Brunson makes everybody else better. Mm -hmm. That's why he is the unquestioned leader of this team. He is the number one guy, and he's only been here for three quarters of a season. So, you know, they they have got to move on. I mean, Well, who are they replacing that production with, though, really is the question. And that's going to be the toughest thing in this offseason. If you move on from him, how do you do it in a way where the team gets better? Just can't take another year of watching it. Ugh. It's it's it. I, I had to turn the TV off the other night. Yeah, I, it's frustrating. Like, I'm not watching this. Well, what it reminds me of is that playoff series where he was just horrendous against the Hawks, and that's what scares me the most. Is what Julius Randle are we going to get? Are we going to get the focus one that can you know score thirty points and you know be someone that is that is elevating the rest of the team, which we've seen at times this year. It's not every single day that he's dragging them down and snapping. But are we going to get the good one, or are we going to get the one that can't I, handle it's, himself? It's too, it's too unreliable. It just, it really is. I, I just, well, there's nothing you can do about it now. You got to get him. No, I know that. I mean, got, I, I mean, got to get him right for the playoffs. Same's done for the future. I mean, I. It's just. They are not going. Even if they if they added a I don't know some side some other type of superstar. If they had Donovan Mitchell here, well, yeah. So I'd say if they had Donovan and Jalen Brunson here together, and they had Julius Randle, Julius Randle's numbers wouldn't be nearly what they are now. Like Julius Randle still is kind of like the go to guy. 
You know, they draw up plays for him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just he's not he's not taking them anywhere. Just not. Well, well neither is Jalen Brunson as good as he's been. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, with this they team, need, they, I know you they need, need more another talent. guy. I know, especially in the Eastern Conference. Yeah. They don't have anybody to go against the big three, although, you know, they've been handling Boston as of late. But they don't have anybody to handle Giannis or uh, Embiid. It's not even close. I mean, those guys just absolutely go right through this team. Yeah. And by the way, you know, it's not just about points and rebound. I mean, like, Julius does not play great defense. There are times where he has got to rotate on defense and he doesn't. Well, of course. And there's a guy standing 20, 20 feet Let's in see. the open shooting a wide open three and he's standing underneath the basket not rotating. To so. be fair, and I'm not saying that I am defending Julius Randle or any of this stuff, but when it comes to defense, we're going to start singling out individual NBA players and playing defense. We'd be here all day long but because not, these guys do not, not play any defense. I know, but how about the fourth quarter? Just like with five minutes to go, just making sure you know with the rotation, you know what's going on and know where you need to be. And I'm sorry, it's just not there. And he, and you know, his his um, defenders can sit here and tell me all day long about double double. I don't really care about double doubles. What I care about if if he think he thinks of himself as the best player in the team, the best player in the team elevates everybody. You know, I was reading uh, Todd Bowles this week, and and he was talking about the Tom Brady aura that he brought to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and how it was amazing, and how one player can just walk into a locker room and raise everybody's level. And Tom Brady has that aura about him, but he, you know, he basically immersed himself into Tampa. So they had no other reason but to respect him and to react to him. Julius Randle's the opposite of that. It's the complete opposite of that. Everybody's got a like baby and wet nurse and come on, Julius, calm down. I mean, like, we gotta try to win a basketball game. Instead, everybody's distracted about whether or not he's going to snap again now, on, I, on the court. I, I know you're done with him, and I oh. don't blame you for being done with him, but he's got an opportunity here where if he is calm, plays great, then he's got a future in New York. If he doesn't and loses it again and has a miserable <laughs> postseason series, then he's going to I mean, then he's gonna be gone. I mean, so he loses it, it again. He's lost it like I know, but I'm just already. telling you, I don't, think, I don't think the Knicks organization, I don't think they're done with him like yeah. you are. I, 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 don't I think wanted they to are. give him a break because of what he said around the All-Star break. Yeah. I wanted to say, okay, you know, he's got it. He understands. You know, he was very open and honest about the way his actions have negatively impacted his teammates. What I've been saying for two years. And, you know, and I've been like, okay, I'll, I'll give it to him. I, he, he, there's a little self-reflection there. He's, he's taking a look at himself. He's taking responsibility. And I was happy for that. And coming out of the All-Star game, he was playing while they were playing well. And then all of a sudden, like the last two weeks, I, he won, he's reverted back to what he was. Yep. And like, how much, how, and at the worst time in the season, well, the worst time in the se- in the, in the regular season, the worst time for this would be in the first round of the playoffs, I mean, and they get bounced because he's a maniac. Dude, he scores over 50 points in a game. Everybody loves him again because he scored over 50 points in a game, but then he reverts back yeah. to, like, it, it's this, the inconsistencies of the, the, I don't know what it's, mental health on the basketball court is frightening. He's a complicated fella, right? Complicated fella, he's just like Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, but... Uh, he's complicated. Uh, well, whatever. I mean, I don't want to compare him to Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I'm just, I've watched this for three years now and it's enough. I've had enough. All right. 